Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome to another Precious Metal Ramble all about capital gains tax. Now in the UK we have just had a big shifting of the goalposts when it comes to capital gains tax thresholds. And whilst that might not be directly relevant to some of you in the US, I would encourage you to have a good hard think about some of the things that you're buying with the current rules because they could change at any time. And I think the example that we're seeing in the UK with the change in the capital gains tax thresholds is a prime example of those shifting goalposts and the impact that it has potentially on your gold and silver investments. So today I aim to go through a little bit of information about what capital gains tax is for us here. It might be similar where you are based in the world, but of course, remember it's geographical, it's dependent on the different governments of the countries that you're in. And I'd encourage you to do your own thorough research. This is by no means an official tax advice video. So with that in mind, I do wanna hear your thoughts and opinions on these changes, on what its impact is for you as a stacker, collector, buyer of gold and silver. I know for me, it's got me thinking about what I want to have within my stack, and it'd be great to hear what you guys think as well. So the two bits of information that we're gonna work off today are from the uh, gov.uk website regarding the recent update that we had from the post mini budget, mini budget, where we've had some changes. It's all very confusing, but this is generally now accepted to be what's going to happen for capital gains. And we're also looking at the advice that is on the Royal Mint's website regarding their coins, because the Royal Mint's coins are capital gains tax exempt, which is a big deal. So let's start with what we knew before. Capital gains tax, for those, if you knew nothing about it before, essentially it's very simple. If you buy something, and you sell something and make a profit on it, then you are liable to pay some tax on that. However, there is a threshold of which you do not have to pay any tax. And that used to be 12,300 pounds worth of profit, not sales, profit per year. So in the example that the Royal Mint gives here, so for example, if you bought a coin for 250 pounds and sold it for 700 pounds, the capital gains tax would apply to the 450 pounds profit you made from the sale. However, you don't have to pay it if your total gains within that financial year fell underneath that allowance. So if you had though, let's multiply that by a factor of 100. If you sold 100 coins and you made 400 pounds a coin, you're gonna make a lot of money, 40 grand. That is over the threshold. And so therefore you would need to register with HMRC to do your own tax form if you didn't already and pay that tax. It's a self-reporting tax. Now that in itself is one of those interesting things that I think a lot of people sometimes just jokingly gloss over, oh, I don't need to pay voluntary taxes. As you, of course you do, it's tax. It's two things certain in life, death and taxes. And this is exactly one of those things that you have to pay attention to. The potential of not paying it and being caught out from it is um, not worth it, not worth it at all. And many people just joke about this, which I find laughable, quite frankly. So it is important. And this threshold of 12,300 is quite a lot. And quite frankly, most stackers would struggle to make that much profit in a given year with gold and silver, certainly on a shorter scale, but on a long-term scale, it can be quite easy to do. I mean, I just look at some of the stack that I've accumulated since 2016, where I was paying 900 pounds for an ounce of gold. If I go and sell some of those ounces of gold, that's 600 pounds profit per ounce. You can see that there's not a great deal needed to sell to get in that. And that's not even taking into account silver that could potentially have a big profit on top of that. So there are, of course, concerns for stackers. And that's why when we come to the Royal Mint, we see the capital gains exempt status for bullion coins in gold, silver, and platinum being very good. Now we'll get to more of that in a moment because I wanna talk about the changes that's happened to the thresholds. So there is a tiered change happening over the next two years. So up until April this year, no, sorry, April this tax year, so April 2023, the 12,300 threshold will be in place. So if you've got stuff and you wanna try and sell it without that threshold being triggered, now's the time to think about doing that. Then from 2023 to 2024, that tax year, it will be 6,000 pounds for individuals. And then the following tax year, it says 3,000 pounds for individuals um, and then it's permanent, it's, yeah, here we go. It says subsequent tax years, the AEA will be permanently fixed at 3,000 pounds. Now it's very interesting that they use the word permanently because that in, you know, that suggests that they will never change this, uh, this uh, 
threshold. Mm. Look what they've done already. They've already changed the threshold from where it used to be. So, you know, we can see how that goes in the future. But, you know, the changing of ball, you know, goalposts for these types of uh, things from governments is not something that we've, uh, you know, got to take lightly. It will happen. It has happened and it probably will happen again in the future. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you want to find out more information about this whole change, then I'll put this link to this website down in the description box below and you can have a look at it. Um, you know, of course, the, the whole purpose here is to raise taxes. We're in a pretty, you know, awful time right now for the world in terms of finances. And uh, it's certainly going to be a revenue earner for the government. Now, how often does capital gains tax really apply to people? Um, often not as much as you think. And, and quite frankly, it's one of those things where if you're playing or if you're paying capital gains taxes, um, you really need to be understanding that you've made a profit and that's good. But at the same time, now that the threshold has been reduced quite a lot, it does make me think personally about what I want to stack, how I want to stack it, and also when I want to look to potentially sell it as well. So capital gains is not applicable to raw mint coins, but it is applicable to raw mint bullion bars. And that's something that you need to think about. A lot of the misconceptions about this come from the idea that it's anything from the raw mint is exempt. That's not true. It is just coins. And that includes proof coins and bullion coins. It also includes sovereigns. A lot of people say, oh, sovereigns aren't a legal tender coin. They technically are for this purpose here. So capital gains, free investments. That means you could buy a million pounds worth of gold Britannias, a million pounds worth of sovereigns. You could sell them for two million pounds, make a million pounds profit, and it would be capital gains exempt, which is great. And that's what we want as potential stackers investors of gold and silver, not to pay taxes on our gold and silver. So from my perspective as a stacker, I've always liked to have a variety of different coins. I've got some raw mint coins, as you've probably seen in some of my videos, and I've got some non raw mint coins in some of my videos, and bars of silver and everything else. And, you know, there's a whole eclectic mix of everything. And I do think that that still has a place for people in their stacks, but the ratio for it, I think, has to be reevaluated. Now, from my perspective, I don't envisage a time when I would need to sell enough gold in one particular tax year that I would then trigger any kind of tax for this. And again, remember, it's about the non capital gains exempt things that you sell. So if I was in a situation where I really did need to raise £10,000 worth of sales from some of my gold bullion, I would probably structure it such that I would make, you know, £2,900 profit from the non exempt gold. And then the rest of the profit comes from exempt gold. That's how I would do it. So you can structure these things. And remember, this is per year. And it's also per person. If you're married, then your partner is your best friend when it comes to these things. You can transfer assets to your partner without any issue. They can then sell it without any issue and then they can use their own capital gains allowance. So if you're a married couple or in a civil partnership, you've got this additional allowance over an individual. So that's definitely something to factor in for people. So from my perspective, the strategy for me going forward is very much going to be about making sure that the backbone of my stack comes from Royal Mint products, uh, Royal Mint bullion products, in coins. So uh, where are we going to go here? Proper gold coins. There we go. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying directly from the Royal Mint, but you know, the range of coins that the Royal Mint has is pretty good when it comes to uh, investment bullion. Britannia is being the kind of flagship coin there. There are others, the um, King Arthur coins, a new one within this, I can't remember what it's even called, the Legends series or something. I've never paid much attention to it because I don't think it's a particularly good series. Um, British Legends or something. Anyway, it's it's not great for me. So I'm skipping that one. But things like the Tudor Beasts in gold, the Sovereigns, these are coins for me and they've got you know everything I would want from them in terms of the capital gains exemption status. Of course, silver as well is exempt when it's in coin form. So that's definitely something to think about as well. But I've talked a bit about the you know, purchasing of silver from places like the Royal Mint with uh, VAT on top. You know, when you put VAT on top of the intrinsic, what, sort of the unit price here of 909, you're into uh, 1100s for a kilo of silver, which is just garbage. So compare that with buying, you know, a bar of silver from somewhere like the Silver Forum for six, six fifty, seven hundred pounds is, in my opinion, a much better ask. However, of course, no capital gains exemption. And that's, I think, an interesting one because things like silver, there's all of these 
you know, potential reports that silver would go up significantly and therefore you would have a lot of gains. Now look, if that happens, if silver goes to $100 an ounce tomorrow and things like that 100 ounce bar I showed the other day um, suddenly have on their own, you know, we're talking £20,000 profit on them or something. I haven't done the maths, but you know what my point is. I don't really care that I'd be paying a bit of capital gains on that. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll have that profit. I mean, there'll be bigger things to worry about in the world if that does happen, but it's not something to be feared, capital gains tax, and it's not something to be actively avoided in any kind of illegal way. Um, you can avoid it in legal ways at the moment, but do remember that capital gains tax is something that could change. The exemption status of Royal Mint's coins could change, and that's something that we as stackers always have to think about and factor in the changing face of our world, of our stacking, and whether or not governments will change the goalposts, as we've just seen in the United Kingdom. Now, is it likely? Who knows? Quite frankly, I don't think anybody really saw the big changes in capital gains tax coming, considering the ups and downs of this year and the various other announcements of budgets and uh, various other things. Will it go up again in the future uh, to increase that threshold? I personally doubt it, because it's a tax that's targeted at people that have you things that they want to make profit on and make money on and it's ta it's a tax on the more wealthy you know your average family in this country is struggling to buy the basic necess necessities so for them to be making enough profit to actually trigger the 12,300 threshold you know that's that's sort of the basic wage of most people in this country sadly at the moment um, the idea of somebody being able to make that much profit just from selling things that they've uh, bought is not feasible so in many ways, it's a tax that only hits the rich, but from the changes that are happening, coming down to 3,000 uh, 3, for individuals, it could be a tax that starts biting at those that are just trying to get by. And those that perhaps have bought, you know, all it would, might take is one coin. Like if you bought the um, one of the very good new US Mint coins that's done very well recently, or if you bought a special collectible numismatic from one of the many incredible places like Germany Mint, one of those coins take off, you could theoretically be getting close to that threshold faster than you think. And that's, of course, then factoring all of the other things that qualify in this world that are not gold and silver for capital gains, artworks and various other antiques and things like that too. So it is interesting to think about. It's something to change some people's minds on their stack, on their setup for their stack. Now, I'm going to finish with a little bit of uh, my take on what I'm going to do. So I've got some non-capital gains exempt things within my stack, and I think I will be um, getting rid of some of those within the next two years. I'll be taking advantage of the, um, the allowance each year to liquidate some of my uh, assets and then rebuy with things that are capital gains uh, exempt. So Britannias and Sovereigns and the like. That's definitely a tactic that I will be employing. Um, that said, I won't be doing everything because I do think there's still a place in everybody's stack for nice variants of different coins and historical things and different world coins and things like that. So that's my strategy. That's my thoughts. And those are my opinions. And I'd love to know yours. So please feel free to comment down below with what you think is the right course of action for you and your general thoughts on gold and silver. And let's also not forget the fact that silver price has gone up quite a lot recently as well. Goodness me, I've just noticed this this morning, filming Saturday morning. I was out all Friday afternoon, didn't see it jump up. But there we go. There are my thoughts and updates on capital gains tax. See you down in the comments. Otherwise, thank you to my BYB Ramblers for listening to this back end of the video. We'll see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.